Now before we get going on step 31 today, I got an email yesterday from uh, Andy. Remember Andy who made us this uh, photo etch bender? And he was mentioning that there's uh, uh, new evidence that's come out that uh, says that the hood may not have been painted exactly the way we thought it was. And I think one of the major things was that the hull may not have been red. It might have been gray. And then I, I remembered there's somebody by the name of Ian also uh, sent the same information. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put uh, the link that Andy sent me uh, in the uh, description of this video. So if you want to click on that and just sort of read it, it's kind of interesting. You know, especially for people like uh, uh, Steve who is uh, also building the hood and uh, he's, a, he's a bit of a I was going to say a rivet counter, and there's nothing wrong with being a rivet counter. Don't don't get me wrong here. Uh, he likes to have things uh, exactly right. So for somebody like Steve, this is important. Or even uh, Jim Steen in uh, in Thailand, he's he's also building the hood, and uh, yeah, it's uh, going to be sort of maybe of interest to him as well. So uh, yeah, uh, check check that out. A bit more time has passed here now, and I've read a lot more comments, and uh, uh, I've been getting a lot of comments about the anchor chain, or the anchor placement, not correct. Okay, well, actually I guess probably there's only one really good reason why I'm not uh, putting the anchor up into the hose pipe and having the shackle come through and uh, be visible you know where it would come out right here or if there if there was an anchor here to come out right here and that is because as as Sergey mentioned these holes do not line up properly you you can't get get this this one here to come up with this one here I mean let me let me grab this here I'm trying not to mark my my hull okay now, this hole here, it, it won't even fit the toothpick, let alone, you know, the, the shackle on the end of the anchor. I mean, it just, it just doesn't line up. Now, I know if I was somebody like, uh, like Scott or something that, you know, was really gifted in, uh, I can't get that out of there. Uh, you know, gifted in, 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 like, you might call it whittling or, or making something look like it's supposed to. Well, yeah, I would probably take a little a little knife and I would, you know, carve that out so that it would go. But you know, I just don't, I just don't feel like doing that. That just is not my expertise. Um, uh, so I'm, I, I, I'm having trouble uh, explaining how I'm feeling here. So uh, I, yeah, I, I do realize that if the anchor was up like we did the Bismarck and it was and it was uh, stowed away in the in the hose pipe with the shackle sticking out the top here, that, that, would, that would look better. But it just doesn't work on this kit. In other words, Trumpeter, Trumpeter didn't make it right. Now, Nolan sent us a photo that, that, uh, of, of a drawing. Now, this is just a drawing. It's, it's not right either, but at least it looks good. And, and this would look actually really, really nice if we could do that. Well, I can't easily do it. And I'm afraid to start, you know, messing around with a knife or or some sort of an awl or something to enlarge the hole. I'm afraid I'm just going to make a mess. Um, I think that uh, this this whole this whole thing should have been further ahead, about a quarter of an inch, uh, or the, or the hose pipe should have been further back. One of the two. Then it would line up better. Um, something's wrong there in the kit, but that's okay. I think it's still going to look all right, and. As one of the viewers mentioned, uh, that the, when the ship was coming into port, they used to drop the anchor down to so that it was, you know, ready to go. So that's what we're going to have here. Maybe I should have a little further down. Um, okay, enough about the anchors now. Now for step 31, it's basically broken up into four separate parts here. So we'll try and get this done today. Uh, it shouldn't be too hard to glue these boats together. It's actually just these four pieces right here. And uh, 
a total of three hose reels. We need one like this and two like this one. Okay, we need D, 11, 12, 13, and 14. I don't think we can put these together wrong. Okay, there we go. Get those trimmed up. Now, it seems to me that when we did the Bismarck, I painted these things after I put them together. This is the first time I'm trying it, so... Well, that fits all right. I don't know, maybe... Uh, because I want the hull to be a different color from the from the deck. See this one here is a little a little bit more difficult. Maybe I need different tweezers. I suppose uh, it's almost a pressure fit. I'll maybe just take a little bit of uh, extra thin and just drop it in the seams. Um, yeah, I think I think what I can do is I can always, you know, paint the inside, you know, whatever color I want. I'm not going to detail it very much, and then paint the hull later. I might use a little brush instead of the air gun. Um, yeah. Now, where I had nipped little pieces of sprue, like this is one of them right here, off of the sides, or off of the gunnel, like right here, and right here, after I did that, I did file them down, but I'm noticing when I look close like this, I can really see them. Uh, better, I'm thinking maybe I should just pull it apart and see if I can't improve on that. See, the, the problem is, if I, I, I know that I can, but then I'm going to be taking the the height of the gunnel down as well. So, uh, well, I'll see what I can do here. Okay, I did pull them apart, and I did sand them down just a little bit right here, and also right there. But, uh, oh, this little piece here I should have got off. When, when I'm looking at it really, really close, like I am right now, then I can I can see all the flaws. But, you know, you got to remember how small these things really are. Um, okay, at, at the moment, my thinking is I'm going to take them apart and I'm going to paint the uh, hull separately from the, uh, the interior. Uh, now, I know that the interior would not all be the same color. And um, maybe I could do two different shades of gray. Uh, maybe a lighter gray for the hull, like just ordinary hull gray, and a darker gray on the inside here, and then maybe possibly highlight some of these these other areas later. I'm doing a lot of talking here, and not, not, not very much actual working, because I'm not sure what I want to do. Okay, let's forget about our boats for a little while. But we got to make up uh, three reels here. And uh, we need uh, one of these, and I think it's two of these, or the other way around. 
Now for the hose reels, we need one number 54 and two 52s. Now there's a, you know, notice there's only one 52 here, but there's another E sprue, so. I try to adjust my lighting so that the light comes across and uh, casts a shadow on the number so that it makes it really easy to read. Well, things like that are of interest to me. Speaking of lighting, how many of you have been following uh, Scott with his build of his 1-200 scale uh, Titanic? Okay, and what he's done is he's uh, putting lighting in it, and uh, it is going to be really impressive when he's done. Okay, so I need another one of these. Yeah, he's not using the uh, he's he's putting his own lighting in it, and it's I would check that out if I were you because. Uh, I hope he finishes that kit because that's going to be one really impressive kit. All right, so we got these. Um, wasn't there something else on the E sprue? Oh no, it was photo etch we need. Okay, now we need the parts that holds them up the little photo etch brackets. So that'd be B14 and B16. We need two of 16. Now this must be the first piece we've taken off of the B sheet because it's still got the plastic sheeting on both sides. And I always leave it on the other side because it helps to keep the little piece in place after I've nipped the tab. Okay, now, I was watching a, another modeler on another show the other day, and what he was doing is he was just using his number 11 blade here. He was, he was cutting the tab, but then afterwards he took the little part that still had a piece of tab on it, and he used his grinder. Now, I don't know. I, uh, I don't think I'm skilled enough for that, so I'm not going to even try that, but, but it's just a thought. Um, I might try it on some. Maybe I'll try it on something that's not important. Although it's probably all important. I think I better stick with what I know works for me, and that's this thing right here. So we need the 14, and we need the two 16s. I wonder if this thing needs sharpening. I haven't sharpened it for a long time. Now, before I actually nip this and remove it, I just want to point something out here with our pointing device. You notice this area right here is open. So I'm, I'm going to have to be careful when I bend it at the, uh, at the bending line right here, that I bend it at the, at the line and not right there. So, uh, yeah, just thought I'd, I'd mention that. I don't think we've had any like this before, either on the hood or on the Bismarck, I think. This one here is the first one like this. Did I get this one? I think I did. No, I didn't. Okay. I did now. And it didn't go very far, don't worry. It's right here. 
Okay, clearly we have Andy's photo etch bender going on here. Now, I'm wondering which, which is better to clamp down on this large flat area and bend up the little one? Or maybe it would be better to clamp down on this one and bend up the large area, large one because the photo etch bender would have a tendency to hold everything nice, like this little piece right here would, would keep it flat and there's less chance of it if you know what I mean. Now I'm just trying to get that just right. Okay, now clamp this down here. Wonder if I've Maybe I should bring it out just a smidgen here. And that way when it when it when I bend it up, it's not gonna come up against this and have a tendency to wanna pull apart. Okay, I think that's got it. Let's just see what's gonna happen. I'm just gonna go real, real slow here with the blade. That's not slow, come on, run! Just straighten it out. Maybe I should use a different razor blade. I should maybe use the one that Andy sent along with this thing. Perhaps I didn't have it clamped down hard enough either. Okay, very, very gently now. Okay, now up. I know you can't see it anymore. Sorry about that. Okay, that seemed to work pretty good. Let's just take it out of there and see what we got. Get the pointing device. That worked good. Now if we can do it again. You know, I should be checking the screen, see if I accidentally bumped the, the bender out of the out of the field of view here. No, nope, it's still pretty good. But when I looked on the screen I could tell I didn't have it straight here. Oops. This is so finicky. If you haven't done this, you you don't know what I'm talking about. If you've done this, you're probably sympathizing with me right now. Okay, I think that looks good. Clamp it down. And in and up. I don't know, it felt a little bit tight there for some reason. Can you still see it? Well, I guess it's a little bit more here. Yeah, that looks all right. Now if I can just do that three more times, we got it. Okay, you know that I've got to do a perspective shot, right? A few minutes ago I was trying to get this little spool mounted in the bracket that we just bent. I think I pretty much got it. I just got two more to go. But anyway, I was concentrating so much on what I was doing I didn't notice that somebody was coming to my door with a delivery. That's it there. And it really doesn't have anything to do with our uh, with our model but it does have something to do with what you see outside there so we'll open that tomorrow just for the fun of it because I know you're curious and in the meantime I'm gonna call it quits for today's video and uh, yeah check out that new paints paint uh, thing for the hood and also maybe uh, check out uh, Scott's uh, lighting on his uh, Titanic. I mean, that's that's going to be, like I said, that's going to be very, very impressive. 
So uh, thanks for watching everybody. Oh, and the links for that will be underneath the description in today's video. You just, you may, may not be able to see it, you just scroll down. I think you have to click uh, see more or show more or something like that. And then uh, you can scroll down and the links will be right there. You can just click right on them. Now, like I started to say, thanks for watching and all being well. We'll see you tomorrow.